Let's do some probability with two and three cards at a time, and we're gonna do these without replacement. We're gonna start by looking at the probability of drawing two kings. So we're gonna be drawing one and not putting it back in the deck. Because these card draws are done without replacement, it means that these are dependent events. So whatever we get for that first draw affects what we get and the probability for the second draw. Let's go ahead and work through the math. So I've got the probability of getting two kings, which I can break down as the probability of getting a king and a king. That and in probability means that we're going to be multiplying the two separate probabilities together. We're going to do the probability of the first king to start off with. Now in our standard deck of cards, there are four kings and 52 cards total. So as I put that probability together as favorable out of total, I end up with four over 52. And I'm gonna multiply that times the second probability. So let's go ahead and find the probability for drawing a second king. Now with that second king, I've already drawn one king. For the theoretical, we assume that we've drawn what we wanted, but I'm not gonna put that first king back. That means that we've got three kings left, so three favorable outcomes. And for the remaining cards, we've got 51 cards left. So that next probability that I'm multiplying is gonna be three out of 51. Let me go ahead and do that multiplication in my calculator. Um, as a reduced fraction, I get a probability of one over 221 which is approximately 0 0.0045, a really small probability. Now for this example, we used conditional probability. This is when we're doing a probability for two events that are dependent on each other. So the probability of getting two kings is the probability of getting the first king times the probability of that second king given that the first was a king. In general, the conditional probability formula looks like this. Let's look at another example. This time we're gonna be drawing three red cards again without replacement. As I'm putting the probability together, it's gonna to be the probability of three reds or the probability of a red and or times a red and then times the other red. These are supposed to be multiplication symbols. I know they look a little bit fuzzy. We're gonna do the probability of that very first red. Now in that standard deck of cards, half of the deck or 26 cards out of the 52 are red. And I'm gonna multiply that by my next red. Now if I go to my deck, I assume that I've drawn a red card, just randomly I'm choosing this jack of hearts. So I've drawn the first red, it's no longer in the deck, which means that instead of 26, there are 25 red cards remaining. And instead of 52, I only have 51 cards left. This gives us favorable out of total for that second red card. So 25 out of 51. So 25 out of 51. I'll bet you can guess what this last fraction probability is gonna look like. We've taken two of those cards out of the deck, which means that I'm down to 24 red cards out of a total of 50. Let's go ahead and put that into our last fraction, 24 out of 50 and I'll multiply that in my calculator. As a reduced fraction, I get two out of 17, or as a decimal, I get 0.1176, or about 11.8%. Great job with these conditional probabilities. Learn more about probability and rolling doubles in this next video. Thanks so much for watching.